Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Salam. Am I audible? Yes, sir. We can hear you clearly, sir. Very good. So, welcome to uh, the second lecture uh, on uh, introduction to ecological chemistry. We are talking about semiochemicals and pheromones. Uh, today, we shall elaborate a little more. And before I start, if you have any uh, questions uh, or comments, uh, you can ask me. And if no question, then I shall go uh, to show some of the slides and then discuss. How about the slide uh, visible? Yes, sir, the slide is visible, sir. And is it moving? Yes, sir, it is moving, sir. Okay, thank you. So today uh, we shall discuss on structure and location of pheromones. Uh, pheromones, yesterday we discussed the concept, what are pheromones and uh, importance of pheromones as well as their practical application. The pheromones, uh, they are generally in small sized uh, organic compound and usually uh, limited to five to 20 carbons uh, in the molecule and a molecular weight uh, between 80 to uh, 300 uh, Dalton. This small size because of uh, the smaller size is better uh, and useful for diffusion uh, through the uh, air. This is because below five carbons and a molecular weight of 80, very few kinds of molecules can be manufactured and stored by glandular tissues. Uh, above five carbons and a molecular weight of 80, the molecular diversity increases rapidly and so does the olfactory efficiency. What is olfactory efficiency? I will discuss later on. Once you get above 20 carbons and molecular weight of 300, the diversity becomes so great and molecules are so big that they no longer are advantageous. They are also more expensive to make and transport and are less volatile. This is very a critical point why most of the pheromones are in small as a molecular weight or small uh, compound because uh, big, a bigger compound is not advantageous. Uh, less, they are less volatile and due to gravity, they cannot move far away. Smaller one is advantageous. And to make the molecule uh, in the insect, uh, bigger molecule requires more carbon, more energy, uh, this is why it is uh, considered expensive for the producer. Uh, in general, most sex pheromones are larger than other pheromones. In insects, they have a molecular weight between 200 and 300, and most 300 Dalton, and most alarm substances are between 100 and 200. That, that means uh, semi-chemicals, uh, you know, all the pheromones are semiochemicals and pheromones uh, not only uh, be the sex pheromones. There are various kinds of pheromones. One kind I mentioned, alarm pheromone, alarm substances are the bit, uh, their molecular size is usually 100 to 200 Dalton. So application of pheromones is a uh, prime importance uh, uh, for us, uh, the discovery of these tiny molecules uh, that uses by insect for their own communication, how could we utilize them for the benefit of human, especially in agriculture. Pheromones can be used to monitor 
best population uh, to determine if uh, control is warranted. Uh, second, to alter the behavior of the pest or its enemies to determine the pest. Uh, Pheromone-based insect control have many advantages. Uh, they are, uh, you know, eco-friendly approach. Uh, for example, pheromone trap, possibly you have seen uh, around uh, uh, agro agricultural systems, especially fruit orchard and vegetable orchard, pheromone trap. Fer a pheromone trap is a type of insect trap that uses pheromones to lure insects. Sex pheromones and aggregating pheromones are the most common types used. A pheromone impregnated lure is escaped in a conventional trap, such as delta trap, water pen trap or funnel trap so uh, there are different kinds of you know structural architectural uh, uh, pheromone uh, traps now uh, here you can see some of the example pheromone traps uh, you can see different kinds so pheromone are uh, used in the trap and when they comes uh, in some cases sticky uh, you know surface so insect uh, trap and cannot uh, move away. Uh, in some cases, uh, uh, some uh, toxic substances, even kerosene and others are used when uh, insect comes and encounter the toxic substances and uh, they are uh, then killed. So without uh, polluting the environment, uh, pheromone traps are the smartest way uh, to control the uh, insect. There are uh, several uh, advantages of using uh, pheromones and other semiochemicals in agriculture or uh, management of pests. The adverse effects only on target pest. The most important point is your uh, application is very target oriented. For example, the current uh, insecticide use that we spray in the field, the efficiency is less than 1%. That means 99% of the applied uh, insecticides are uh, going outside the target pest, that is uh, the environment. Uh, this is why uh, it is, uh, you know, absolutely not efficient way. Uh, scientists are looking for the efficient way. If 99% are waste and pollute the environment and affect the biodiversity, uh, uh, it also uh, uh, causes the, uh, you know, the uh, burden for the farmers, uh, users, uh, uh, it is not cost effective. Second, relatively non-toxic and required in low amounts. Uh, usually, for example, pheromones. Pheromones are not toxic to the environment and it required in low amounts. This is a very critical point you must understand. In case of semiochemicals, the concentration uh, uses for uh, communication uh, of the organisms, uh, producer and receiver are extremely low. Uh, this is why very low amount you need to use. And uh, non-persistent and environmentally safe. Usually they are non-persistent uh, in the environment. Uh, they are easily degradable. Uh, as a result, a residual effect uh, to the environment, uh, different environmental organisms, as well as safety of our food is uh, also uh, much better than the uh, synthetic uh, insecticides or uh, other pesticides we have been using. Difficult for insect to def uh, develop resistance against them. Uh, this is another important point because it is not creating pressure to uh, others, for example, insect pheromone, as it is a natural communication uh, 
uh, signal, so no uh, need to have uh, develop the resistance. Resistance usually if a toxic compound organism is exposed to harsh environments, uh, uh, you know, that Charles Darwin, he said, survival of the fittest, then few uh, members can survive uh, through uh, mutating the uh, receptors of that stress and uh, which we call resistance. Resistance is in a pesticide resistance or antibiotic resistance is now a very uh, 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 serious problem worldwide. Monitoring of pest populations with pheromones uh, is often uh, often uh, integrated in management programs. So. Uh, pheromones are uh, not the lone solution, but it can be used in integrated uh, management of the pest. There are lots of databases uh, for uh, pheromone, for example, I guess it was disconnected, right? Yes, sir. So uh, why are, I lost you. Anyway, I am coming back again. Have you seen this slide? No, sir. The screen went black, sir. And this one? Can you see? Is it visible yes, sir. now? now I can see. Yes, it is visible now, sir. Okay, and uh, I am not sure you uh, got my uh, talk on this slide. Uh -oh. sir, uh, sir, we lost you in the uh, resistance part. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, that means uh, uh, insect uh, resistance and resistance against the pathogen is now a big issue worldwide. Uh, in case of uh, pesticides, any kinds of pesticides or antibiotic, uh, resistance is a big problem because it creates serious uh, selection pressure to the uh, target uh, organism. And among the population, few of them uh, can survive uh, through a mutation process of the uh, receptor. So, uh, uh, as you know, the Charles Darwin, he said, uh, survival of the fittest, even in severe, you know, uh, toxic environment and harsh environment um, among the peak population of any organism, few of them can survive and develop resistance, uh, resistance to the harsh environment. So in case of insect control, or any disease control. Resistance is a big issue uh, in agriculture. Uh, in case of semi-chemicals, for example, uh, the pheromone, uh, as it is natural uh, and not create any uh, natural communication uh, signal, uh, not creates any uh, selection pressure so no chance of uh, developing the resistance or like that. So application of semi-chemicals are considered uh, the sustainable tools for uh, eco-friendly tools for the management of uh, insect. Uh, for example, pheromones, monitoring of pest population with pheromone is often integrated in management program, integrated pest management program because pheromones are very selective and uh, pheromone of uh, a certain insect uh, uh, is not effective to other uh, insect. They are very species specific. Uh, as I mentioned, there, uh, uh, there are a database of uh, pheromones. It is called pheromone.com. So you can visit the ferrobase uh, or uh, database of pheromone. The ferrobase is a freely accessible database of pheromones and semiochemicals. So you can find, you know, thousands of uh, 
small molecules which have been discovered by uh, chemical ecologist it comprises several uh, databases to provide comprehensive information about pheromones and semiochemicals currently the ferro base contains uh, pheromones and semiochemicals of more than 7000 species any problem sir maybe the connection is very unstable sir Yes, I'm really sorry. But how about now? Yes, sir. Now it's great. Oh. Uh, currently, the ferrubase contains pheromones and semiochemicals of more than 7,000 species and uh, 3,500 semiochemicals compounds. So uh, 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 my uh, statistics may be a bit older. So if you visit there, you can uh, share with me uh, uh, the uh, current status of the number of uh, pheromones or semiochemicals included in the ferrubase, that means pheromone databases. The ferrubase lists uh, the occurrence of these semiochemicals within the various animal tax taxa, which is hard to observe in the raw literature data. Information such as mass spectrometry, uh, covets retention index, NMR synthesis, a chemical formula, 2D and 3D chemical structure of most of these semiochemicals are given and included in the ferrubase. Do you know uh, what is NMR? Can anyone tell me what NA NMR stands for? NMR. If you know, please tell me. And if you don't know, also please tell me. <laughs> Otherwise, I cannot understand whether. Sir, is it nuclear magnetic resonance? Yes, it is nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, like, you know, MRI. MRI, you know, uh, magnetic uh, uh, resonance. Uh, uh, amazing. Uh, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance in the magnetic field if you put a, 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 any chemical substance in pure form in a certain solution, for example, chloroform or others, then you can find some signals of the proton and other uh, elements present in the sample. So NMR is very powerful tool for understanding uh, the chemical structure. And it is called a spectroscopic method. Uh, very powerful for the discovery of NMR, scientists discovered, uh, received the Nobel Prize. And uh, any, uh, from the NMR, scientists discovered MRI, you know, now your brain can be, you know, scanned whether any tumor or any other suspicious materials are there without, it is non-invasive and no, no uh, radiation is here. So only magnetic field, no problem at all for the, uh, uh, you know, safety of the uh, uh, cell uh, or compound. So uh, 2D, 3D chemical structure, uh, 2D, 3D chemical structure of the uh, any chemical compound. Uh, there is a planar structure, there is a 3D structure. So I shall show you, uh, maybe one day I have uh, some ball and ring uh, system. So any structure, chemical structure we see in the uh, textbook, they are plain structure. There is 3D structure also. Uh, a covert uh, retention index database for more than 8,000 organic compounds and 25,000 records uh, with literature references are listed in the ferrobase. A, a floral compound database of about 2,000 floral compounds. You know, floral compounds mean compounds discovered from the uh, flower uh, that have uh, that are volatile and uh, you know. Uh, some of them are industrially being used as a, a, a perfume. Uh, their occurrence in seven, 1,700 plant species is also listed. Uh, another database of over 100,000 abstracts related in the uh, ferrubase records is also included. You can browse the reference by journal authors and year. The database on the application of semiochemicals in pest management is also included and uh, can be browsed. So uh, please note uh, the uh, website link uh, 
of the database that is www.ferrobase.com so you can have some experience and share with me so this is uh, all about the pheromoon and we can have a short break, break and uh, discuss uh, uh, about the uh, you know discuss about uh, uh, the different aspects of pheromone so you can ask some question and then we shall move on uh, uh, another topic sir could you again describe why the pheromones are only between 5 to 20 carbons a very nice question pheromone uh, actually they are small molecule and uh, the reason is a uh, pheromone uh, you know excreted by one a, me uh, a member of the insect and it is perceived by other members even uh, staying uh, 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 you know far away and this is why uh, pheromones are mostly uh, they are uh, volatile compound and molecular size smaller is better otherwise you know uh, if a heavier compound always, uh, you know, uh, they are uh, attracted, uh, uh, the gravitational force uh, uh, force them to go down uh, on the earth. So smaller molecule can diffuse and float on the air and move uh, faster. Uh, so volatile compound, uh, most of them, uh, even your, uh, the molecules in your perfume they are very uh, small in size not only small in uh, uh, size they are basically hydrophobic in nature hydrophobic means dislike water they dislike water otherwise in the atmosphere uh, uh, it, a water vapor uh, may uh, uh, mix with or dissolve the uh, volatile compound and then uh, it would be heavier and uh, uh, go to the uh, ground and cannot float and diffuse uh, uh, for longer distance. Another point is that, uh, you know, any molecule which is uh, uh, synthesized by a, a, an organism in their cell requires energy. So heavier, a uh, bigger molecule, uh, requires more energy, more carbon, more hydrogen, more, uh, you know, oxygen and more ATP. So uh, organisms are smart enough to synthesize unique structure and mostly small in size. Uh, Abrar, is it clear? Yes, sir. Sir, then what's the issue with compounds smaller than five carbons and 80 that don't sweat? Oh, uh, the, uh, the two smaller compounds, uh, you know, uh, for example, less than five Dalton, uh, you cannot find huge diversity. Pheromone needs to be uni unique for the species. There are thousands of insect species, so they uh, uh, always, uh, you know, need to make own specific, uh, uh, you know, structure. Uh, are not related to the others pheromones, then it would be, uh, you know, uh, the uh, communication will be leaked and others would be misguided. Uh, so uh, the larger in molecular weight, there is a high chance of structural diversity, uh, but there is a balance. I understand, sir. Thank you. Uh, do anyone have any other question? Sir, can you please repeat the relation between selection pressure and insect resistance? Yes, uh, this is an important point. Uh, uh, in March uh, 2011, uh, perhaps you have seen in the TV, there was a severe, you know, uh, uh, severe uh, uh, tsunami in uh, uh, east coast of uh, Japan and that destroyed many peoples and if you see the, that tsunami even uh, recorded in the YouTube now uh, just like movie in uh, unbelievable very big building ships they are 
uh, moving uh, like anything. So uh, during that uh, severe, you know, tsunami, there was uh, a leakage of Fukushima uh, nuclear plant also. So uh, radiation also leaked and uh, many people died. And if you see the tsunami, you can imagine that nobody will uh, survive uh, uh, within the area of tsunami. But, uh, you know, uh, no tsunami and no hazard, no toxin can kill 100% of the population of any organism usually because uh, some of them somehow escape in uh, Japan. Some of the people survived, but they were exposed to uh, radiation. Uh, as a result, huge mutation uh, taken place in their uh, DNA. So uh, in case of uh, when you use antibiotic, uh, sublethal dose or overdose, uh, some of the organ uh, or insecticides, some of the uh, member in the whole population you are targeting, uh, they can uh, survive. How they survive? Due to CBR pressure uh, to destroy them, you know, uh, there are some variability, genetic variabilities in any uh, population. Uh, so, uh, they, uh, due to uh, that, uh, you know, uh, pressure, uh, either it is natural or artificial, especially artificial, artificial pressure, uh, to overcome the pressure, sometimes organism can uh, be mutated. Mutated means to change the uh, target site uh, of the uh, uh, pressure, uh, and it is called mutation. And at, uh, after that, you know, new progeny uh, from that uh, survive, uh, survived uh, organism, uh, they are insensitive to the, uh, that particular uh, pressure uh, that is maybe the antibiotic or the uh, uh, insecticide or like that. So in our case, in human, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, most of the people, uh, more than 55% people are, uh, uh, you know, uh, in their case, antibiotic resistance is a, a serious issue as uh, studied by uh, ICD-DRV. So uh, when you take any antibiotic or any drug, uh, you should not take of your own way. Dose and course is very important. Otherwise, uh, the chances of uh, uh, resistance uh, is uh, high. Even if you maintain the optimum dose and course, there is a chance of, uh, you know, developing resistance uh, in the uh, target organism. And resistance means, I told you, uh, any compound we uh, use uh, for curing any disease or uh, control the insect or any other uh, organisms, uh, the compound has a target site. Target site means uh, there must be a receptor where the compound binds a uh, specific receptor. So uh, if uh, uh, the mutation taken place and the receptor protein structure is changed, then the compound cannot find the target site. Uh, as a result, uh, it would be insensitive. Any dose you use would not harm the uh, organism. Uh, is it a clear, uh, uh, Orin? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome. Any more questions from anyone? Ask some question. Uh, and asking a question uh, is like, you know, browsing uh, uh, the encyclopedia. So you can uh, browse uh, a living encyclopedia in front of you uh, freely uh, ask the question. Sir, you wanted to talk about olfactory efficiency. Yes, olfactory in our nose, you know. Uh, there are some receptor, uh, even our tongue. Uh, in our nose especially, we can sense the uh, 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 smell. Uh, uh, there are some uh, receptors over there. Uh, so we can distinguish, is discriminate the uh, different smell, uh, even smell of uh, mango or smell of jackfruit, even uh, uh, 
uh, you know, a, a blind person can distinguish. So there are a particular receptor. Receptor means protein. They locate in the membrane of the cell. Uh, they are the, you know, signal receiver, for example, like gatekeeper. Uh, receive the signal and immediately pass through uh, the internal, uh, you know, uh, a way which we called signal uh, uh, transduction pathway. So several uh, second messenger and others uh, participate and gene expression taken place, some protein is synthesized, and finally the sense we can sense, but we cannot understand the uh, long uh, pathway uh, travels by the, that uh, signal uh, because it uh, happens uh, within uh, a few or femtosecond. Uh, this is why we cannot uh, sense. Uh, 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 but uh, scientists discovered the detailed pathway of the uh, signal uh, perceived and then uh, signal magnification and transduce uh, uh, a transduction pathway. Uh, all the you know molecules, biomolecules involved in relaying the message to the interior. Interior means uh, to the uh, uh, chief executive of the cell that is in the DNA. So certain gene is expressed and protein is synthesized. And finally, when protein is synthesized, uh, we get the uh, you know, uh, uh, real response that is you can sense if it is bad smell or good smell or you can distinguish. Uh, similarly, insect has also uh, such uh, uh, system of, of perceiving the, uh, you know, uh, molecules and uh, other organisms also uh, do have. Any question? Any more? Mahajabin for those, uh, you hear me? Yes, I can, sir, but most probably my network is a bit lagging today, so I couldn't catch some of the topics today. Mm. I will check the record, but sir, I have one query. This might be a bit funny. So what's about human pheromone? I haven't heard it about. Okay, this is a good question. Uh, whether human, who may human produce any pheromone or not. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, human is smart enough uh, to communicate. For example, I am communicating with you using the internet. So, uh, uh, no need uh, to produce the pheromone. Pheromone, uh, uh, but human produces lots of hormones, uh, not exactly uh, the pheromones. And hormones, as I told you, they are uh, uh, also physiologically active molecules uh, and uh, synthesize in specific uh, uh, organs or a specific site, but physiologically transported through the uh, blood circulatory system and uh, they are uh, all the hormones are interconnected and coordinatedly work on the physiology of us but human cannot uh, uh, produce pheromone to communicate other human because human has lots of other ways to communicate one another very complex you know, species, homo sapiens, but insect and other microorganisms, even plant, for example, plant cannot move away. Human uh, for a meeting with other person can go to USA or Australia and can fly <laughs> and they can even uh, do, uh, you know, video call or uh, lots of other ways. But uh, in parallel, the sessile organism like plant, plants are called sitting duck. They cannot move away from the place. Even there is a danger, rain or a storm, or hail storm or other things. Uh, is it clear? Human in parallel uh, have uh, the hormone, hormonal system. Yes, sir. sir but uh, like here we have something like each people have a different kind of smell so that could that be also uh, some here some possibilities about yes, some yes. pheromone like structure sorry uh, ex exactly not pheromone but uh, it is true uh, human you know uh, always emit different volatile compounds 
through the you know uh, hair uh, uh, cavities now uh, or some other ways and it is the excretory uh, mechanism not exactly the communication because uh, uh, we, uh, we need to excrete lots of you know uh, toxic substances uh, and uh, uh, not exactly the secondary uh, metabolites as uh, used by the insect plants uh, and some other uh, you know uh, organisms uh, uh, less are complex than the human but it is true the blend of you know uh, the volatiles released from one person to another person there might be a slight differences and i'm not sure uh, whether there are some unique uh, molecules for the person uh, and uh, it, it, it could be an interesting uh, a point of uh, uh, the or subject of the study one interesting point is that human you know uh, we have now 740 billion uh, uh, members uh, of homo sapiens all over the uh, world but uh, fingerprinting you know fingerprinting or uh, a scanning of the uh, retina uh, you can discriminate one person to another nowadays uh, scientists are working on and the palm microbiome uh, microbiome on the skin of hands are unique uh, from one person to another this is another subject of a study maybe in future people will use the microbiome signature of the microbiome present uh, on the palm uh, as identification uh, mark or marker for uh, a, a detection of a person any question? If no question, then I shall go uh, for uh, showing some more slide. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, there are various classes of pheromones. We talked about pheromones. Uh, for example, sex pheromones. Uh, sex pheromones are compounds liberated by a female with a dual purpose of both attracting the male from a distance and also of inciting uh, it to copulation when at close quarters. The same terms also applies to substance produced by the males to excite the females. So sex pheromones are uh, 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 is called mating pheromone. So one attract uh, to the other, and it can mostly uh, female produce that sex pheromone, but male also can do. And the second group is trail pheromones. Trail pheromones, uh, as the name implies, are used to social insects to lay down an order trail which other members of the species can follow to guide them from the nest to a food source and back again, especially in, uh, uh, you know, uh, ant use the trail for a pheromone and you can see around you. Uh, alarm pheromones uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, an chemical alarm. Uh, alarm is communicated to other members of the society by diffusion of pheromonal vapors uh, in the air. Most insect alarm pheromones are produced and delivered from the mandibular or anal glands or from the sting apparatus. Uh, uh, I am not sure you have experienced uh, the biting or stinging of the uh, uh, wasp or honeybee. They have uh, such uh, alarm uh, pheromones. Uh, and uh, sex pheromones are probably the most widely studied group of insect allelochemicals. Allelochemicals means the chemicals or semiochemicals. Allelochemicals means one chemical used uh, uh, to uh, uh, regulate the physiology of others. Uh, this is another term. For example, some wheat. Uh, uh, plants, they secrete some chemicals to stop the germination of the, uh, you know, crop plants 
or uh, uh, retard the growth of the crop plants. Uh, so in uh, plant plant interaction, allelochemicals or allelopathy is a very important subject. And some of the allelochemicals are being used as herbicide, eco, uh, you know, eco-friendly herbicides. And they have now been recognized and characterized in many different species, that means uh, sex pheromones. The simplest sex attractant is valeric acid. Uh, valeric acid, very small molecule, the female pheromone from the sugar beet uh, oil worm uh, is valeric acid. Majority of the pheromones are long chain unsaturated alcohols, acetates or carb carboxylic acids. Here you can see some of the structure, structures of uh, you know, sex pheromones. For example, valeric acid, the uh, first structure you see, very uh, simple uh, female uh, sex pheromone of sugar beet oil worm. And another, uh, you know, uh, sex pheromone is R melane. R means uh, some, you know, uh, uh, compound R and S form. Uh, that means optically active in the presence of light. They uh, can function and they they can uh, they have the rotation differently. So same uh, uh, molecular weight and structure, but. Uh, here is the uh, sign of R that is, uh, it is above the structure is from the planar structure, R melane. Uh, it is uh, the sex hormone of uh, wax moth and benzaldehyde, another very simple, you know, benzaldehyde. Uh, Leucania uh, impuris, uh, one uh, moth, uh, uh, it can use uh, these sex pheromones. Another is Nepita lectone, uh, aphid, aphid you know very well uh, in mustard or uh, cruciferi family or other family, aphid is really a, a dangerous sucking uh, pest, My, Mayura uh, BC, they use uh, Nepita lectone, uh, this very complex structure. Here 3D structure is, uh, uh, you know, uh, indicated. Uh, and uh, then, uh, you know, uh, swift worm uh, moth also use uh, uh, the structure happy uh, alas nectar. So these are some examples. Uh, you can uh, remember some of the examples of the uh, sex pheromone. Uh, second, I would like to uh, talk about very simple and you have uh, experience, I think, uh, uh, of observing uh, the trail pheromonal action in the ant. Trail pheromones are characteristically employed by ants, bees, and termites. They are all social insects, which produce them in a variety of special uh, uh, produce, uh, 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 glandular tissues. And chemically, trail pheromones are of a variety of structures. There are huge structural diversity. For example, leaf cutting ant uh, produce methyl 4 uh, methyl pyrrole 2 carboxylate, this compound. As trail pheromone, red ants use different uh, structure, that is uh, 3 methyl 2 4 dimethyl pyrazine. Uh, and uh, termites, for example, reticuli ter termis, uh, they produce this very simple, uh, you know, unsaturated uh, hy uh, hydrocarbon uh, or, uh, you know, or the uh, alcohol-like uh, compound. So uh, these are some of the examples of trail pheromones. And alarm pheromones, production of alarm pheromones is often related to that of defense substance. And in combat uh, among social insects, the contents of mandibular glands are discharged through the mandibles uh, onto the enemy, which is thus uh, tagged as an aggressor. Uh, so the sting apparatus of bees and wasps contain several glands that produce alarm pheromones. Uh, alarm pheromones example, very simple example, you know, uh, the formic acid. Uh, when ant bite you, you can uh, feel pain due to the presence of formic acid. Uh, and uh, another, uh, you know, uh, alarm pheromone from the uh, ant is and decay, uh, the second structure you can see. And termite, if you touch termite, they can, uh, you know, uh, bite you and release 
terpinolin and sometimes milky substances or like that. So these are the examples of alarm pheromones. And uh, we shall discuss later on the behavior of ant, how uh, uh, ant behave very uh, funny way uh, and uh, in a mathematical way and very uh, complex real life problem. Uh, uh, the scientists thought that uh, could be resolved by studying the uh, ant uh, uh, behavior. And they use uh, trail pheromones and other semi-chemicals for communicating uh, to the members. Not only insect, uh, you know, pheromonal substances are also used by the microorganisms. For example, in bacteria, uh, when there is a good environment for reproduction uh, or harsh environment for their survival. They use uh, uh, some signaling compound called quorum sensing. And these are small molecules, acyl, homoserine, lactones, small molecules they use to communicate uh, with the other members in the same species. One very important point is that either quorum sensing signal or the pheromones, usually they are, uh, you know, uh, inter, uh, intraspecific, not uh, one species communicate uh, with other species. Mostly they use uh, for uh, to communicate uh, 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 among the members in the same species. This is very interesting point. And this is the specificity uh, uh, which allows us to uh, control the uh, uh, organisms or regulate the organisms by using their signal. So this is all about uh, today's, uh, you know, a short uh, lecture on uh, uh, pheromones, uh, different classes of pheromones and their practical application. And uh, now uh, five minutes, you can ask some questions. So this, uh, this is your time now. Sir, if uh, the pheromones are intraspecific intra and as targeted, then how can we use pheromones as traps as it will only lure only one kind of insects? Yes. And this is the advantage, not the disadvantage, uh, because uh, you can specifically uh, uh, solve your specific problem. And if it is, it has broad spectrum of uh, activity, then it would be chaotic. Uh, 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 and specificity is very important uh, for uh, uh, the, you know, drug or even in agrochemicals. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, control several uh, insects uh, in the same pheromone trap, you need to include uh, several, uh, you know, uh, pheromone uh, in the same trap, then different insect uh, will come and trap. Any more question? Good question. Thank you, sir. Naz, uh, are you uh, listening my talk? Yes, sir. Any question? No, sir. No question. And how was your impression? Uh, are you uh, feeling good uh, about uh, chemical ecology or ecological chemistry? Yes, sir. It's interesting. And uh, in the previous lecture, I discussed about uh, the diversity in the colors uh, uh, on the wing of uh, butterflies. And obviously you observed the diversity in the colors of flowers. What is your impression? Why colors have uh, incredibly high diversity, uh, colors of the flowers? Why uh, a, 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 a flower, flowers have diverse colors. Some are blue, some are yellow, some are red, some are pink, some are black, white. Sir, 
Can anyone explain? Mahjabin for those? Can you explain why flowers have high diversity in colors? Mim, are you attending the lecture? Hello, Mahjabin Ferdaus Mim. Sir, I got disconnected. Sir, could you please repeat again? Yes, my question is why plant flowers have high diversity in colors? Why not? Sir, I guess for the betterment of pollination, like the pollinators are being attracted by the different colors of the flowers. Uh, why not see if uh, there is uh, only one color, pink color? So pollinator cannot see the pink color? Yes, uh, they can. Uh, apart from uh, that, like the, uh, as we have uh, read about the butterfly thing, the colorful uh, color of the butterflies are being uh, displayed to now uh, attract or to give some vibes that uh, the uh, attract or the pre, uh, predators cannot attack that. Okay. And Tasneem, can you add something more? Why plant flowers have high diversity in colors? Tasneem Jarin, Jarin Khan. Uh, sir, uh, I also think it's because of uh, pollination. Some flowers are hard to pollinate, so they show different uh, various colors to attract um, pollinators because they can't do it uh, themselves. Um, uh, do, do you think that uh, uh, all pollinators uh, visit the same flower or different flowers? Are there any specificity? Uh, sir, sir, I do understand us, sir. It, it is to... Abra, uh, you can answer later on. Uh, first, uh, Tasneem. Sir, um, sir, can it be because of uh, like um, different flowers contain different amount of pollen and um, the, um, the raw material of honey? So bees can distinguish flowers who, uh, wh where we should go to get more raw materials for honey making. Is it yeah. something like that? Uh, it is partially okay. Yes, Abra, uh, do you like to add more? Sir, it is to attract specific pollinators, sir. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, you know, specific color uh, 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 indicates uh, you know, specific signal uh, to the specific pollinators. Uh, in the co-evolutionary process, all pollinators never uh, love uh, all the flower colors. There are some specificity. And uh, just having the color signal, color means some chemical substances. That means semi-chemical. So uh, they are basically a different flavonoidal compound. So specific color is uh, recognized, uh, even color intensity, recognized by the 
specific pollinators. So uh, where they can uh, uh, recognize where they should go and get the, you know, reward. Reward means, as Tasneem mentioned, pollen, uh, as well as pollen is highly nutritious, protein uh, rich uh, 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 substances. And also nectar. Nectar is uh, prepared uh, uh, in a way, all nectars are not same chemical, uh, 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 you know, uh, constituents. Nectars are prepared in a way that particular pollinator will get the nutrition. Requirement of the particular guest, pollinator is the friend and guest. If a friend is visiting you, what you would do? You will uh, choose uh, uh, the, uh, uh, or prepare the food or do everything to satisfy your friend or like that. So uh, nectars in different flowers, they are also chemical substances are different. So by observing the flower color or the aroma, uh, specific uh, insect uh, or pollinator can sense and find the uh, flower. And it is not only, uh, you know, for the pollination, you see in the earth uh, to avoid the competition, if a particular flower uh, uh, has uh, uh, the, uh, the ability to attract all the pollinators, it would be a mess. All pollinators, if comes to a single flower, uh, it cannot uh, take the load. So there are uh, incredible, uh, you know, uh, specificity. Even in human, you can see, uh, if I ask you the choice of uh, color, you can find different person have uh, different. So specificity is uniqueness uh, is very important in the uh, ecosystem and uh, in the natural system. And uh, really uh, amazing story I shall discuss later on when we study the um, biochemistry of plant pollination. Anything you want to add? or you want to ask? Uh, if no question, then uh, uh, thank you very much for attending uh, the lecture and uh, asking uh, interesting questions and also responding. So if you do not ask, you cannot be silent. I shall ask you a question and we shall make uh, every uh, lecture and every session more interactive, even though we are remotely, uh, uh, you know, uh, staying, uh, no matter a digital world uh, allowed us to uh, be very close and uh, interactive uh, in our uh, lecture. Uh, thank you very much. And I shall share one book as well as the, uh, obviously the video lecture uh, through your Facebook group. And one uh, interesting point is that uh, in your learning process, uh, you know, always note down the new uh, term or keyword you are learning from this lecture. And in uh, at some point of uh, uh, the, a course, I shall ask you to list, uh, for example, 100 uh, keywords that have uh, you have never been, uh, you know, heard uh, 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 other than uh, the lecture, uh, lectures of uh, the introduction to chemical ecology. Uh, thank you so much.